This is an authentic Titanic picture. Authentic? Yes. This thing is so rare. If it checks out, it's the find of the century. I'm asking for 80,000. Dude, 80,000 bucks? This is a Titanic. And there's a whole bunch of deck chairs stacked up. But that one's the most Holy important. Holy crap! My name is Steve Santini. I buy and sell the darkest, most gruesome artifacts on the planet. Welcome to the dark side. There's everything. It's just stuffed with things. This place is unbelievable. Oh, that's beauty. Oh, check this Creepy out. dolls, creepy possessed dolls. Beautiful. Oh, there. This is something I would want if only it was 500 or 600 years older. Oh, I love old jewelry boxes. Look at this thing. Oh, you know what this is? Look at the insides all pleated yeah. in. It looks like a little sarcophagus. Uh. Yeah, that's a lock of human hair in oh, there. Oh, that's creepy. This is a funerary keepsake box. So this is dead person's hair? Uh, you, yeah, for sure. And you would, you would take this thing home, and you'd sit there and braid the dead person's hair. Still creeps me out. What, what do they want for this thing? 100 bucks. Oh, man, I want to buy it. It's not quite my thing, but I could quadruple my money on this. Really? And uh, yeah, or do even better in a trade. So OK, I'm off on my own, guys. I have a deep passion for dark artifacts partly because I love them, but also because I make money leasing them out to museums. It's my passion and my business. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Good to see you again. Good, you got anything for me? Sure I do, right here. 18th century, Tyburn Gallows, Hangman's Noose. Holy crap. I have been after an authentic piece of gallows rope my whole life. Oh, well, this is authentic. Oh, wow, that's disgusting. This is a gallows rope from Tyburn, the most infamous of all the English execution grounds. I mean, this place saw the murder of hundreds of thousands of people in the name of the law. But I've never had a piece like this. Very scarce. This is amazing. This right here would have had another loop on the other side of here. Right. It would not break your neck. You would actually slowly suffocate. By body weight alone. By body weight oh, alone. Oh, sick. It was used on men, women, and children for some trivial thing that we'd slap on the wrist. Children. What are you asking for? 3,500 is the asking price. Can you do 1,500 on it? It's pretty low. How about 25? <sighs> Can you do two grand? That would be the absolute best. You, you can't could do, go any lower. You could go for two grand. Two grand. That'd All right. Two Thanks grand. so much. This is. Freaking awesome. I've been chasing one of these forever. This actually is used to hang somebody. This Tyburn gallows rope is an amazing find. I mean, these things are centuries old, they're super rare, and they just don't show up anywhere. This will be the perfect addition to that torture exhibit I'm building for the historic jail. You broke your pass that there, please? Ah, oh, yeah, the grot color. Yep. Right on. Put your, put your fingers in there. Why? Trust me, I just want to show you what it's capable of doing. This, they used to crush the, yeah, wicked, eh? That's awesome. nasty. Yeah, so just be careful. You realize if you crush my fingers, I can't work for you, right? Put it in the box. I found a guy named Jason. Right. And he's a collector, and he apparently has a Titanic deck chair that he's looking to sell. Titanic deck chair? People come to me all the time to authenticate rare antique objects, especially items from the Titanic. And I'm telling you, this thing is so rare, if it checks out, it's the find of the century. I can't take another day in this rolling torture chamber, man. It's black, it's sunny, it's hot, I want AC. You go find somebody that can install AC in this death machine, get a quote, knock them down in price, make me proud. You know, I've seen Steve Hagel so often, it should be no sweat for me to give it a try. Okay, man, we'll catch you later. <sighs> Holy shit. Whoa, I can't believe this. The reason I'm selling my Titanic chair is because I need the extra cash to make other investments. There's one thing I noticed about this chair that's got me really concerned. On the headboard, it should have a carved star, and it doesn't. And the carved star was the emblem of the White Star Line Titanic's owners. For me, it's a nail in the coffin for this not being a Titanic deck chair. So I'm seeing some stuff that just 
it, it's weird. Here it's worn. In other places, the stain's reddish, and there it's brown, and it's almost blackish here. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's completely authentic. I know my stuff. Either somebody's like refinished this several times, or we're looking at a replica of a Titanic deck chair here. I'm thinking somebody's gone and refinished this thing. Several times, possibly. I know it's been refinished, but that doesn't mean it's not authentic. I mean, the bolts, the hinges, everything, it's exactly the way it would be on an authentic chair. Can you tell me who owned it, or is there any background on this? The deck chair was originally owned by an R. Holman who worked at the cable company offices in Boston for the recovery ship, Mackie Bennett. R. Holman? Yeah, there's a stamp on the back to prove it. It says, made by R. Holman and Company, Boston, Mass, USA. To me, that, the stamp just doesn't work because Titanic's chairs were not made in Boston. What are you looking for price-wise for this? I'm asking for 80,000. <laughs> Dude, 80,000 bucks? I mean, you're talking about a huge amount of money here. Would you agree to let me take it, show it to my experts? You can take it for a week before I have to move on to somebody else that I can sell it to. Thanks a lot, I appreciate that, Jason. I gotta get some air conditioning in this thing. This is the Cadillac? This is the Cadillac. This is a hearse. Yeah, but it's still a Cadillac. Yeah, that's right, but it's way custom. We'll have to put a couple small holes in, but nothing that can't be fixed later on. So if you guys can put some numbers together for me, give me a call? Certainly. Well, I think that went pretty well. It started to butter them up with some compliments, and we're gonna see what that quote is. I'm leasing an exhibition of torture devices to a historic jail. I can't wait to show the curator, Renee, what I've brought. It's going to freak her out. See this one here? I'll show you how this thing worked. That's a nice belt, actually. Can I borrow that? You can try it on right now if you're brave enough. Here, stand up. This piece dates back to the Inquisition period and the witch trials period. It comes from Germany. And they would lock them in this, in the cell, in between the torture sessions, because people were so desperate, didn't want to go down the hall and be tortured again, they would actually gnaw through their own wrists and commit suicide. It's called a garrote collar. You'd lean back into this, which was mounted to the post. Rob, give me a hand here for a sec. Yeah, you have a phobia? Big one. Oh, that's okay, you're gonna be fine. Well, sure. What would happen is the executioners would grab these handles here, we're scaring the shit out of Ray. We gotta take this off. I, I think the history of restraint and torture devices, although it's displeasing, I mean, it's important for us to know this. We don't wanna commit the same atrocities in the future. I brought this especially for the exhibit here at the prison. It's not your traditional looking noose. They'd make you climb a ladder. The hangman would get up there with you, hook one end to an iron ring, pull the ladder away. It's a pretty horrible way to go. Take a long time. Let's go hang around at the gallows, okay? Rob, let me let me show you how it would have been. You know, you would stand here, the condemned. The hands would be bound behind the back like this, and then this would go over the head like so. Shoom! You drop through to eternity. Well, I always knew I'd pay for my sins sooner or later. Yeah, well, it's you know, you always wanted to be well hung too, but I mean. What about the AC? What's the quote? Um, oh, okay, bro, it's thirty-eight hundred bucks. 3,800 freaking dollars, man? You're supposed to negotiate. I would have offered the guy half of that. What's wrong with you, man? Steve is crazy if he thinks he's going to get that AC for nothing. Dude, you can't haggle everything. Oh, bullshit. In my quest for the truth about this chair, it's very important I bring it to a person like John. John is an expert in antique and period furniture. The thing that I was most expecting to see on this chair would have been on the headrest here in the middle, a five-pointed star. Incised into the wood. Yes. Yes. If it had been floating around in the sea in those temperatures for that period of time, I would expect to see considerably more damage to the wood. Another thing that I did notice with this particular piece is the manufacturer's stamp on the back, which actually places it as being made in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Right. The one thing that I have not been able to find is the name of the manufacturer of the of chair. Any of, of any of Titanic's chairs or White Star's chairs. chairs. Correct. Either could we. I can almost guarantee that if anybody remade these in the 1940s or 50s, they can't get a hold of these special sort of nuts that grip into the wood. Of course they can. Really? You can still buy them. Huh, that's interesting. Every one of these pieces is still available. 80% of the things that people believe are worth a lot of money aren't. They're not the original piece, they're not antique. In short, they're fake. 
In your opinion, do you believe that this could be a Titanic deck chair? It's missing anything to suggest that it was the property of White Star. I have serious doubts about the authenticity of this item, and at the end of the day, it may not actually be worth the effort. After meeting with John and hearing his information, I've got a lot more work to do to prove that this thing actually sat on the decks of Titanic. Dark artifacts contain something of the souls of all the people that they ever touched. That's why I take them to Mickey. She can reach inside and pull that energy out. This chair has been, like, really used when you have an inanimate object, it's been handled by many people, it's been many places, it's seen many locations, so you just have to take a little more time. When you touch it down here, it's very heavy. On the footrest here. Distressed, tragedy related to this, this is This is this is wild. Male or female, can you, can you tell? Definitely a woman. You can picture somebody sitting in this thing? Yeah, Whoa. absolutely. You see what the woman's wearing? Can you? Put it into a time frame? Or... Yeah, the lady that occupied this chair was wearing like a sort of Victorian suit. Whoa, this is blowing my mind because okay. this chair is believed to have sat on the deck of the Titanic. Wow. On our maiden voyage, yeah. Wow. I, I, I brought a passenger list with me. And uh, would you have a look at it? Yeah, absolutely. What I'm doing is I'm using the psychometry to feel where I'm being drawn to, to each page of the paper. Here is your passenger, Steve. This is Charlotte Appleton. Wow. Blown away. Finally, after waiting in the mail forever, uh -huh. I got the documents from the archive. Can I see them? Our home yeah. did, in fact, make furniture and deck chairs. No way. OK, 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 let me see the damn thing. These come from Massachusetts, from mm -hmm. the archives? Mm -hmm. Rufus Holman incorporated his business in 1909. This helps. So far, everything I've found has the star. I haven't seen anything without a star. You keep digging in the archives. I'm going to go on a road trip, take that chair down to the Titanic Museum, compare them side by side mm -hmm. to check out the measurements and stuff. I need you here continuing to work on the archives, so. Eat your burger. Never argue with a redhead. I finally figured out why I feel the heat so much. Why is that? More than the average person, right? Mm -hmm. Well, because uh, several female friends tell me I'm super hot, right? So I'm already hot. So, I mean, hot weather is just unbearable for me. Oh, you are so full of shit. <laughs> the Titanic Museum in Branson is an amazing multi-million dollar attraction. They've built the whole museum to resemble almost a scale the full front half of the ship. And they have incredible recreations inside, like the first class grand staircase. Oh my god. Yeah, all the, uh, the lists of the passengers, you know. And there it is. There it is. That's the name. Charlotte, Charlotte Appleton. Appleton. 53 years old, underlined that means that she survived. It's a sobering thought that that woman could have sat in this very chair. Wow, Steve, it's great to see you. Hey, Craig, fantastic. Thanks for coming to help me get to the bottom about this chair. It's my pleasure. This has got to be like seeing a long lost child for you. I'm really excited that Craig Sopin's here. He's a Titanic historian, a collector, and a real authority on the ship. All right, here's the chair. At first glance, these chairs obviously look similar. This chair is dark. There's varnish on this chair. Fairly certain that this chair, right after being recovered, had stain put over it. The chair was put into use, unlike this wreckage. Fair enough. OK. And that certainly explains the difference. Look at the nuts here on the bolts for the armrests. If you glance over at that one, it's the same round fastener. Well, I think by perhaps measuring the components, seeing how close they are that way is going to give us an idea you know, if we're even on the same page. And I think those measurements will be key. 15 and a quarter. On the footrest across. Wow. 15 and a quarter. That's exact. Whoa. 
Well, I, I will say I didn't expect that. Exact. You're kidding me. It's exact. There it is again. Are you serious? <laughs> there it is again. Get out. This is unbelievable. And, and look at the shape of the two armrests. I mean, they are exact, even down to this curvature. Just eyeballing it like that, 22 and 3 eighths. No way. There is a common belief that McKay Bennett recovered only one deck chair, one Titanic deck chair. And that deck chair is currently on display in an East Coast Museum. But I think that that belief is misplaced, and I can prove it. Because I happen to own the original logbook Ooh. kept by the McKay Bennett Wicked. during Titanic's body recovery mission. And it has something to say about deck chairs. And at 2.20 on that day, the log entry state that the McKay Bennett actually stopped to pick up deck chairs, plural. Plural. Further on in the logbook, when they are now back at Halifax, Nova Scotia, on May 1st, there's an entry that shows that the ship's carpenter on McKay Bennett was repairing deck chairs. The McKay Bennett didn't carry deck chairs of its own. So the, no. deck, the deck chairs referred to were Titanics. the Titanic deck chairs. Why would they repair the chairs, the broken deck chairs from Titanic? There's only one reason I can think of to repair deck chairs, and that's to put them to use. I would say more likely than not, this deck chair once graced the decks of the SS Titanic. It was great coming to Branson and hearing Craig's amazing information, but it's gonna be even better getting back home and buying this chair. I've got awesome, awesome info for you. What do you have? Remember Charlotte Appleton that we heard about? She was actually on a ship in 1912 to London with her sisters and a close friend of theirs. Okay. Unfortunately, they were attending a funeral for her other sister. That's a drag. But then on her way back to New York, she jumps onto the Titanic. Right as the collision takes place, they were on the deck. Of course, they got into the lifeboats. They were saved. Yeah. There's more. There's more, and this Sweet. is amazing. Check out that chair right there. The Holy important. crap! That chair what? has no star. That proves that if there was one on board, of the thousands of chairs without a star, there would have been others. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't believe this. Awesome. When do you want your raise? <laughs> this is incredible. Anytime now, I'm ready for it. <laughs> hey, can I get a raise too? Forget about it. High five. Done. There you go. go. <laughs> Amazing. Now all the pieces are in place, and I'm really believing this is a deck chair from the Titanic. So you've had it for a week. What did you find out on your trip? A whole bunch of things. We took it to a reputable Titanic museum and compared it to one that's already been provenanced. Side by side, they matched, meaning they were made from the same template. That's fantastic. So it means it was on the Titanic. The one thing we don't have, Jason, is we don't have the crewman from the McKay Bennett and a chain of custody from him taking it from the water and who it went to next is that 1% doubt in my mind because there's a break in the chain of custody. I would give you 40. 40? You, that's half. You just stood here and told me all the facts about why it was on the ship. You've got to work with me, share the risk, or I've got to leave. I wanted to stay at 80, but I'm willing to go down to 60. 60. Hey, bro, bro, you know what? You got another chair. You really don't need this one. I mean, seriously. 60 grand is a lot of money for this. Maybe maybe you're right. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, okay. It's a Four, deal. 40? Yes. Right on. Thanks, man. Cool. Mine. It's been a wild ride, but I'd do it all again in a heartbeat. Maybe it's time to put another Titanic exhibition together. For me, collecting, it's, it's not about the object. I mean, there's history, there's value. I'm collecting human experience. What are we gonna do about this AC problem? I mean, ideas. Come hey, on. I took care of it. You took it? I took care of it. We got AC? Yep. Well, not exactly AC, what but close to it. Close to it here. What do okay. you got? Well, I was gonna surprise you later, but I might as well bring it out now. Bring it. You gotta be kidding me. Hey, it moves the air. That's not AC. What'd you pay for this thing? Well, he wanted 50 bucks. 50 bucks? Yep. <laughs> for this? You would have been proud of me. I haggled him right down to almost nothing. You haggled? Yep. What did he want? You know what? $29.95. $29.95 yeah. of my money Your so money. I can have hot air blasted back into my face. And you know what? 
When I'm dead, you're going to be transporting me in the back of this hot box. Well, then I'll definitely have to get AC because you're going to start stinking after a while. <laughs> For more information, go to oln.ca.